Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we are once again playing Pokemon Gym Leader Simulator because you guys wanted me to complete it. So starting things off, you're welcomed by the Kanto Champion talking to you about your new role in this game. You basically have to be a gym leader and not lose. Unfortunately, Brock is the only playable character so far, but that's okay. The game is still pretty difficult, and you're greeted by Dirk, the gym leader guy, who starts showing you around the place where you're going to be battling trainers, and then, of course, where you can heal. You can buy items here. You can also buy gym decorations, and then he also takes you to the back room where your teams are going to be. So you have Team A, Team B, Team C, and so on, and basically, in order to get to the next team, you have to win five battles with your current team. Also, you can only lose five times. If you lose more than five times, the whole thing is over. It's a complete game over. He actually just jokes with you here saying that if you lose once, you're, it's all over. But luckily, it's not. So I go up to teammate and I equip my team and I get my Geodude and my Onyx. Nothing crazy right now. And water types and grass types absolutely destroy me. Luckily, though, the first trainer is a bug type trainer. So that's great for me. I feel like the first battle in charge of this gym is going to go swimmingly. And that's exactly how it goes. I beat the Caterpie, the Butterfree, and the Metapod. And I win my first gym battle. You also get money from beating them which is of course what you need to use to buy potions etc but healing is free which is very very useful i look at the different things you can buy you can buy like right set of rocks cone removal ideal rocks some pretty pricey decorations though which is a bit unfortunate because all my money is going to be going on potions next up we get battled by this random kid he's got a ratter which of course for me is absolutely no problem i'm hoping that there's just no grass or water types because apart from that we're all right however though paris comes in and at this point i couldn't remember if paris learned a absorb or not luckily it didn't go for it, even if it did have it and because it is a bug type pokemon it is weak to rock so the second battle also very very easy he also has a pidgey as well but i mean i'm literally got i've got a geodude and an onyx like this pidgey is going to get sent to the shadow realm straight off the bat and of course if you are a long-term viewer of the channel you will know that we have already played this rom hack but we only played the first team i didn't actually know what the second team was in the third team and a lot of you guys wanted me to carry on so that's why we're playing this again Anyway, third up, we got another bug catcher. So I'm like, yo, this is an easy first day on the job. I'm chilling. Bug catcher Paris sending out Weedle. Again, he's got Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill, just like the first guy had a Caterpie, a Metapod, and a Butterfree. A really, really easy to beat. Just rock throw all them bugs. Just, just squish in the cast of bugs life. They are not going to be looking too good after these rock throws. Anyway, move on go and heal and then back to my podium and then this woman comes over and she's got a pretty decent team she's got a pikachu which okay fair play if i wasn't a rock type gym leader this would be a little bit scary but luckily because i am a rock type gym leader this pikachu is not going to be having a great time so i destroy the pikachu no problem at all and then she also sends out a vulpix i've been very lucky at this point in the time that i've not come across any water or grass type pokemon because again i'm quad weak to both of those moves and so if one person brings a bloody bulbasaur my boulder badge is going to be getting out of my hand Quicker than you can say this trusty frying pan into a drying pan. One of Brock's greatest comments. Anyway, we take out the Vulpix. No problem at all. Haven't even had to use any potions yet. I'm just saving all my money for those decorations to make this gym look a little bit nicer. Next up, we're actually battling Gold, the protagonist of Pokemon Gold and Silver. And I'm a little bit worried at this point because I feel like he could have a Chikorita or a Totodile. Luckily, though, he does pull out a Cyndaquil. So I was counting my lucky stars because, as I say, one Vine went from a Chikorita, one Water Gun from a Totodile, and my team is absolutely destroyed. So luckily, the Cyndaquil is only level 15 as well. So it wasn't strong enough to become a Quilava, even though it does evolve at 14. I don't know why Gold is just stopping this evolution evolution from happening but for me i'm happy about that i take out the the cyndaquil and then he brings out a togepi and togepi was actually a massive problem because it kept charming me and it also had metronome and i was a little bit worried at this point that he was going to get a, me a move with metronome that was going to destroy me luckily he didn't and i do take out the togepi and that is five trainers defeated so i can finally move on to the b team which again I haven't really used yet. I think I did one battle in the last video with them, but I didn't properly get to use them. And I, at this point in the time, I couldn't remember what they even had. Um, so I go over to Dirk, talk to him about the five challenges I've just done, and I move on to the next team. And now it's upgraded to a Graveler, an Onix, and a Kabuto. Unfortunately, Kabuto kind of sucks. It's not really got anything going for it. Gravel is obviously very, very nice, and Onyx is okay, even though Onyx's attack stat is terrible. And the first trainer I've got coming up to me in today's 
um, situation is a Team Rocket grunt. And I'm like, bro, I ain't just be stealing some Pokemon. Why are you trying to get a gym badge? He's got a Gligar. Not too much of a problem. I can easily take this out with Graveler. There is a level jump as well. It went from level 12 and now I'm level 25. So as you can see, the Pokemon are getting a lot stronger. And this game is getting more difficult. Trust me, this ROM hack does get really, really difficult the further you get into it. So anyway, we take out the Gligar. He then brings out a Grimer as well. Again, no problem there. I can just use a ground type move, but I've already used my rollout and it's just destroying everything left, right and center. A loving rollout in this game is so useful. When you don't miss rollout, it's just, you just keep spamming A and it just bang, 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 just destroys everything. Anyway, after that, I go over and start buying some uh, potions because at this point, I've got a little bit of money saved up. I can buy some super potions, which are a little bit better than potions. And I can also buy a revive as well, just in case I do need it. Like, I'm not doing any Nuzlocke rules here or anything like that. If my Pokemon is dead, I'm buying a revive. I'm using that revive. And then, of course, I have to go over and save my game because I don't want to be losing any of my progress. And then it's straight back onto the podium. And we're coming up against the next trainer who has a level 32 EV, which is a bit annoying. Trying to lower my attack stat. Not on my watch. Roll out my best friend at the moment. Just using that also trying to use bite as well to flinch me getting very very lucky here not getting flinched and also not missing any rollouts and also getting a crit with the last one that was a very lucky battle up next we've got a policeman i'm hoping that it's the johto policeman with the fire tights because then it's obviously an easy win for me does lead with a pharaoh though that's level 22 so again no problem for me pharaoh is a very easy pokemon to take down so at this point I'm just using rollout. My best friend, like I say, I'm just clicking rollout. There's no reason not to. There is still no grass or water type Pokemon that are coming against me. I've got absolutely no problem just rollouting the whole dang time. So, of course, as you can see, Fury Attack doing absolutely nothing. Rollout kills the Pharaoh. Also sends out a Voltorb and a Growlithe as well, but I make quick work of those. I don't know why it said he still had a Pokemon left. I don't know what. I think there's a little glitch or something. But anyway, the policeman walks off. It's another dub for Brock. And next up, we have to battle this little kid. And he says, I hack. And I'm like, all right, he's got PK Hex in that briefcase. Sends out a bloody shiny Lugia, level 25. Bro, he was not lying when he said he hacked. I'm very happy that I went and bought some super potions and a revive because this is a little bit ridiculous. Anyway, shiny Lugia, extra sensory, all my health, not happy at all. Rock Blast, only hit twice. Was hoping for at least five there because that would have probably killed the Lugia. At this point, I know that he's just going to kill me with another extra sensory. Graveler is dead. I've got a Kabuto in the back. I've got an Onyx in the back. I go into Kabuto, hoping I can do some sort of damage to this thing. I think I have Aqua Jet on the Kabuto, which is pretty good. I also have, like, Absorb and stuff. It's not really going to be doing much. So I have to revive my Graveler, because Graveler can take an extra sensory and also can get a Rock Blast off. And if I just don't get unlucky again, I might be able to hit more than two Rock Blasts this time. Kabuto also hangs on for his life, by the way. What an absolute trooper. So I use my Super Potion on Graveler to get it all the way back up to full HP because as I say, barring any crits, I can live an extra sensory and hopefully do some damage with a Rock Blast. I go into Onyx this time though because I do believe that I could get like screech screeches off and stuff, but either way, Onyx died. Luckily, I do kill the, the Lugia. This kid's just telling me how I can beat his unbeatable Pokemon. Didn't even give me any money, um, even though he's hacked. So he's, he must have like nine, 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 nine Poke Dollars or something. He gave me like his pocket money. Can't believe it. Anyway, next up, we have a Fire Tamer. Again, no problem at all. The Lugia was a scary Pokemon, but now we're back to easy Pokemon to kill. And I can just Rock Blast roll out to my heart's content. Start taking out these Pokemon. I probably should have been Rock Blasting the whole time. It's, it's actually a little bit better than Rollout. Because with Rollout, you have to constantly um, get lucky like every turn. But with Rock Blast, it's just doing a lot of damage. Also, I had an Arcanine, but no problem for Brock. And then the, the Fire Tamer has, uh, has gone home a little bit upset, unfortunately. So, that is another team completed. That's another five wins. So, I can go straight back into the back room, talk to Dirk, and get my C team. Which consists of Graveler, Onyx, Kabuto, and a Rhyhorn. So, I still have Kabuto. was really hoping that I got a Kabutops at this point. It also asks you if you want a nickname every single time, which I don't know, I thought was a little bit pointless. But we are now on Team C. I have a little look at the Pokemon, and they've got some pretty good moves going for them. Got Rock Blast, Smackdown, Self Destruct on the Graveler, uh, Aqua Jet on the Kabuto, which is really nice. And Rhyhorn has Rock Blast and Bulldoze, so obviously very, very nice. Now, Rhyhorn does have a really good attack stat, so I thought I would lead with Rhyhorn just because it could do the most damage. And next up, we have a Bug Catcher. So really, really good start for me because these are just easy. These are just easy people to beat he leads with a scyther which again bro four times weak to rock like this game is getting easier and easier 
Trust me, I regret saying that, it gets a lot harder. He goes for a Fury Cutter, but that is no problem for me. Rock Blast twice, boom, Scyther is dead. This kid also has a Heracross though, which is a little bit unfortunate because it does have close combat and it did actually do quite a bit of damage to me. Um, but I luckily destroy that and then he sends out a Butterfree, which again, no problem for me at all. I can just Rock Slide that and just one shot the Butterfree. So Butterfree is dead and Bug Catcher, whatever he's called, uh, Kenneth has been defeated. Next up though, I think it's like a little bit of a glitch because I get the exact same trainer. Kenneth is once again back. He's just gone to the Pokemon Center. He's come straight back and he's like, mate, give me that Boulder Badge. I'm not making any changes to my team. I'm bringing my bug types and we're winning this Boulder Badge. Of course, the situation did not go his way. It, it actually went the exact same way it did the first time. Butterfree comes in and just one shot it with Rock Slide. Again, the only thing that was really doing damage to me was his Heracross with close combat. Um, but basically what I did was just he'd close combat. I'd live on one with sturdy and then I just self-destructed and just killed the Heracross. It was really easy to beat. You have to be quite strategic in these battles because some of them are a little bit more difficult and it's not just you know, clicking A every time. Sometimes you actually have to use um, different strats and stuff. Anyway, uh, this girl comes in with a level 38 Raichu, which is a bit of a boss, um, but I've luckily got Bulldoze, so I'm doing hefty damage with that. The Raichu is a bit of a problem just simply because it can do a bit of damage. You know, I think it does get access to some pretty good moves, but luckily in this game, it didn't. And also, trainers are now getting potions, which is a little bit infuriating because you get it all the way da back down to zero, and then it goes all the way back up, and then it goes all the way back down to zero, and they've just got like three max potions or something. It's getting a bit stupid. Anyway, in comes the first grass type that I have to deal with. It is a gloom. Hits me with a Mega Drain, obviously does a ton of damage. We're in a bad situation here because not only am I like four times weak to grass moves, it's Mega Drain as well. So it's getting all its health back every time. So I'm in a bit of a predicament. So all I can really do is just hope and pray that uh, Rock Blast does a ton of damage. Obviously Mega Drain's putting me all the way back down to one HP. I hang on with Sturdy. And at this point, I just have to hope that Rock Blast hits a bunch. I get a lucky crit, and but I only hit three times with the Rock Blast. So Gloom is still alive. So, of course, it can just Mega Drain me and kill me. Luckily, it's not going to get too much HP back because I'm only on one HP. So, it's not the worst situation in the world. Anyway, I'm left with an Onyx and a Kabuto. And I'm thinking to myself, can Onyx outspeed Gloom? I don't know how fast Gloom is, but Onyx is a little bit faster than I was actually thinking. And I can get off a Rock Slide and kill the Gloom. So it's not actually that bad. And then he sends in a Weeping Bell as well. I'm like, bro, back-to-back -back Grass types. What do you take me for? I have nothing for that. Um, but luckily, the Weeping Bell doesn't go for any grass type moves. It goes for a knockoff, and I'm like, all right, fair play. Thank you very much. It goes for a sweet send. Oh, God, evasiveness. Um, I'm, I'm really upset that that's fell. Luckily, though, I can kill with the Weeping Bell, and that was probably the toughest battle that we've had so far just because it was back-to-back -back grass types. Next up, though, the Karate Kid comes into my gym, and he is not messing about. He actually has a really, really good battle. He has a Machop that he leads with, which I'm already weak to. You know, if this thing has, like, counter or, you know, it has Vital Throw or whatever, any kind of fighting type move, and it's not great. Um, so I hit it with a Bulldoze, hoping just to get like a speed drop and just do a lot of damage. He hits me with a Seismic Toss, which does 27 HP to me. Uh, Hyper Potions, obviously. And then he has a Machoke, and I'm just thinking, this is going to go in one way and one way only. He's going to pull out a Machamp. He does kill uh, uh, my Rhyhorn, though, which is a bit unfortunate. His Machoke is nearly dead, so I can just come in with Kabuto and hit with an Aqua Jet. Unfortunately, though, he's not done healing. And he does have an extra potion in his back pocket. I don't know what he's got behind that bandana, but he's potioning up with it. And he's uh, using... Luckily, it's just a potion, though. It's not like the worst case scenario. It's not like a hyper potion. So he does heal. And I can just kill it with two aqua jets. It's not really a massive problem. However, though, he does bring in a Machamp. And I'm just sand attacking it right now, just hoping that I can get, you know, a little bit of luck, a little bit of RNG on my side. And then bring in Onyx and Graveler and hope for the best that I can dodge some attacks and start doing some big damage. Um, so I bring in my Onyx and I do decide to go for a Screech just to lower that physical defense. Um, he goes for a Revenge, which does quite a bit of damage. Um, not great for Onyx, but he does live it. And I decide to, at this point, is it worth getting more physical defense off or hitting it? I decide to go with another um, physical defense drop. And then he goes for Seismic Toss and actually misses. So now I'm in a really good position because he's at minus four. He's at minus one accuracy. Obviously, Rock Slide's not doing a lot because it's resisted. Um, but again, he is still at minus four. So it all comes down to whether I can beat the Machamp with my Graveler. And Graveler does have Sturdy. So I'm in a pretty good position here because I know that 
if I hit it with like one attack, it should kill it. There's no way I'm going for self-destruct. I go for the bulldoze, it does kill my champ. So that was a really, really tough battle. Back to back tough battles. As I say, this game is getting a bit difficult. Next up, we've got Hiker Nicholas, which isn't too bad. He does have rock types, and luckily I do have ground type moves on my rock type, so I can I can just kill them all with like bulldoze and stuff like that and what have you. I don't have earthquake yet, which is a bit unfortunate, but either way, I take out his Rhyhorn. He has a couple of the rock types, and he also has a pseudo wudo. I take that out. He also has a shuckle. We all know how bulky shuckle is, especially with his potions and stuff. Really, really annoying. Um, but I just eventually get through it. It's just one of those battles where it is literally just he's doing no damage to me. I'm not doing any damage to him. Um, and you just have to keep clicking the A button because that's all you can really do. I get a lucky crit though, which I was really happy about. The speed drop, which isn't the worst thing in the world. He's going for gastro acid. I don't know why. Um, and then just another bulldoze. Uh, and then Shuckle lives on like 4 HP, which again, a bit unfortunate. But uh, it is another dub. And uh, we're getting closer and closer to the next team. He's got potions again. Like I say, these trainers have so many potions. It's like this gym of mine where every trainer seems to have like a ton of potions and they just don't stop using them. It's like they've all just gone to the bloody department store right before my gym and they've stocked up on 50,000 potions. Anyway, next up, it's time for Team D. Going to the back room and now this team looking powerful. No golem yet, but I do have a Graveler, an Onyx, a Kabutops and a, I think it was a Rhyhorn or a Rhydon. Either way, I've got Stealth Rock on Graveler now as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, as I say, I've got Onyx now. Really nice moves. I've got Kabutops with Mega Drain, which is really good. And yeah, I do have a Rhydon, who of course has a really, really good physical attack stat. Um, so I'm just thinking that I may as well lead with Rhydon just because he's, he's going to be doing a lot of damage. Um, and, you know, he's not the fastest dude on the block, but, you know, one hit and he's doing much, much, much damage. So I'm buying some high potions now because my HP is getting higher. I need better potions. And we're doing the first battle of the day here. And uh, this time she brings in an Azumarill. Literally the worst case scenario, an Azumarill. I have literally um, nothing for this, barring my Kabutops. So... Um, I think to myself that, you know, hopefully Mega Drain does a little bit of damage. Or can I, start, I can start doing a little bit to this Azumarill. But yeah, I don't know if this thing has huge power or not. Either way, he does go for quite a few moves, but I just keep Mega Draining. He does heal up, but luckily Mega Drain is doing more damage than he's doing to me. And I just keep getting health back. And then she has a Meganium. Bro, this team, like, she's done her research. She's been around. She's caught some grass types. She's caught some water types. And she's come back to my gym. And she is not messing about. It starts going for Petal Dance, which I guess in my favor does work a little bit because it can confuse itself. Uh, of course, I can't get into Kabutops because it is a times four stab Petal Dance, which is just going to kill me straight off the bat. Uh, kills the the um, the the Graveler, but luckily I can come in with Rhydon and hit it with a takedown. I do have Rock Head or something, so I don't take damage from that. And then she also has a Jinx as well, which I am weak to, but at the same time, this is also weak to Rock type moves, so I can just hit it with a a, a Drill Run. And uh, luckily, I do win. It goes, it goes for the wake-up slap, but again, not a massive problem. I just kill it with Drill Run. But yeah, that was a really, really annoying battle. That could have easily uh, gone south. And I've still not lost the battle yet. I've gone, up, I've gone up against Shiny Lugias, all these different Pokemon. And then lo and behold, this kid's back. And I'm like, bro, you better not have some more hack Pokemon. But luckily, it's not. I don't know if it's his cousin or something. Leads with a Giraffe Rig. Again, nothing crazy. Just an easy Pokemon I can take down. It can hit me with some Psychic type moves, which isn't great, but you know, it's not something to be scared of. Next up, a Pupitar comes out, no problem. Can just bulldoze that, uh, drill run, whatever you have you, and just kill that straight off the bat. It was one level before uh, evolving into Tyranitar, though, so I feel bad for this kid. Then he sends out a Murkrow. Again, no problem at all. I can just one shot the Murkrow. Uh, another easy, easy day at the job, really. And that is another trainer defeated. I feel bad for taking out that six-year-old, but you know, he shouldn't be coming into my gym trying to take my gym badge. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Next up, Scientist Alexander with a Porygon. These things were annoying as hell. My lord, try attacks left, right, and center. Paralysis, freeze, burn, all of it. Horrible. Hated every moment of this battle. I had to Hyper Potion as well as him doing it. And it was literally just try attack. That's what it was doing. It was just spamming this move constantly. And I, and I didn't have any full heals or anything. I did have um, Hammer Arms. So obviously, I was hitting it with super effective moves. But my lord, I, I, I got unlucky here. I got unlucky here. And he has another one. It's not even like one Porygon was enough. He had to bring in another one, which was so annoying. Traced my Sturdy, which was, again, a little bit annoying as well. Um, but luckily, I do take out the, uh, the Porygon. Of course, burns me with another try attack. I feel like I didn't survive one try attack with it without getting a status element really really annoying anyway uh ross from friends turns up next archaeologist isaac and sends out some fossil pokemon um absolutely no problem for me of course the kabutops was a slight issue because it does have mega drain and aqua jet um and i don't really know why i stood in here to be fair like it goes from the mega drain 
does about half my health, not too bad. Um, I go for the drill run, thinking it would kill. Uh, it doesn't, unfortunately. So I just go into my own Kabu tops, show him who's better, and take out that one. Next up, Omastar comes out, showing us other fossil Pokemon. At this point, I was like, he better not have an Aerodactyl in the back, but luckily he only had two Pokemon. So, um, yeah, again, just an easy battle here. Mega Drain, quad, quad effective, no problem at all. So, anyway, Archaeologist Isaac, not too happy with himself. He pops off. And I go back and heal, get some more potions. And then another fire type trainer. Absolutely no issue here at all for me. You know, when I saw a fire type trainer walking up, I was like, hallelujah, this is an easy battle. Um, he does burn me though. The amount of flame bodies and, and stuff going off on this battle, it was actually a little bit more difficult than I was expecting. Uh, but anyway, I take that out. I take the Rapidash out. Also has a Flareon. As you can see, my whole team burnt from like flame body and, and stuff. I don't even know what moves he was using. It might have been flame body, but either way, I was getting burnt way too much. And then after that, it is on to the next team. And this team is looking pretty good. We have Golden. We have Onyx. We have Kabutops. We have Rhydon. We have an Aerodactyl as well. These Pokemon are looking good. I've got Earthquake now. Explosion. Metal Sound, which is very useful. I've got Earthquake on him. I've got Iron Head, Sky Drop, Hyper Beam, Takedown. My team is looking very, very good. I decided to lead with Rhydon once again, just because that's the tactic I've been using. Hiker Elias coming up next. And he leads with a, a pretty annoying Pokemon, this Donphan. Level 82, I thought was a little bit unfair. This Donphan took me to town. It destroyed my whole team. It was just earthquaking all of my rock types. Luckily, though, being immune to uh, ground type moves, Aerodactyl did come in. Hyper Beam did luckily kill it. I started screeching it all sorts, uh, metal sounding it. And yeah, we somehow got through that battle. But yeah, that level 80 odd Donphan, not fun at all. Next, I think it's time to spice up the gym a bit. Remove some boxes, remove some cones. You know, give the give the gym trainers, the, the gym challengers, a little bit of a, a sightseeing situation as well. Get rid of some things using all my hard-earned cash. Um, and then next up, we have Psychic Clear. This battle was really, really annoying as well. Um, basically, she sends out an unknown, and it's the unknown letter A. So I thought to myself, oh, this is actually going to be really good because Hidden Power can't touch me. And it might spell out like um, a really cool word with all these different unknowns. Oh, of course, has hidden power grass, hidden power water. I don't even know. I don't know why I went for earthquake. Completely forgot I had levitate. Um, but luckily, the hidden power wasn't doing too much. So it was just grass. Um, but yeah, she had a level 65, level 70, a level 75 unknown. Unfortunately, they were all just the letter A. So it didn't like spell out a word or something. I thought it was going to at least spell the word like ass or something just for a bit of banter. But anyway, um, I do take out all the unknowns. It was just a little bit annoying with the hidden power and stuff. And next up, we've got old man Santiago, who's deciding to try and uh, try his look at the Indigo League. Len uh, leads off with a Machamp level 58. Again, not really happy to see this. Machamp is not a fan uh, of me, and I'm not a fan of it. Next up, this really weird thing happens. So I start trying to sky drop the Mantine. It says it doesn't affect. I'm like, okay, I mean, it should do, but all right, fair play. Maybe it's just a glitch in this game. And then, for whatever reason, it just activates this weird thing. And once you sky drop a flying type Pokemon, you can't hit it with any move. Every single attack just misses. The Pokemon that you're fighting doesn't go for a move, and you just cannot hit it. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm glitched. How do I get out of this? And then Big Brain Matty decides to go for Sandstorm with Onyx, and it actually does start doing HP to it. So I just have to roll down the turns and just keep going for Sandstorm because I can't touch the Mantine. The Mantine's not going for attacks. I just have to keep Sandstorming. Um, and oh my lord, it was a ball ache. It took forever. But luckily the Mantine finally dies. It took so many turns. Mind you that it was using potions as well this whole time. So I think, I don't know what the PP of Sandstorm is, but I just had enough every single time. And then he brings in Aria Dose. Not really a massive problem. Again, I can just Stone Age that. I was a little bit worried that after missing that attack, I was like, bro, don't say the game is glitched. But obviously, Stone Age does have a high miss chance. He does go for the cross poison and does get the poison. But luckily, I do hit the Stone Edge and kill the Ariado. So the game wasn't glitched. But yeah, um, note to self, if you do play this game, sky dropping flying types, it breaks the game and you have to just sandstorm. Uh, next up, we have the Scientist Theodore bringing in Zatu. Again, no problem. It's a flying type. It's level 68. As you can see, the levels have absolutely shot up. Um, but yeah, Zatu, again, no, no problem at all. It's a little bit unfortunate. I don't have any rock type moves on... Um, Aerodactyl, but I decided to leave with Aerodactyl just simply because I can Iron Head and I'm really fast so I can get some lucky flinches and stuff. In comes Porygon 2 though, my best mate in this game, loves a Tri-Attack, uh, once again loves a Tri-Attack and starts using it on me again. Um, but yeah, we just get through the Porygon 2, no problem there. And the next up has a Blastoise. Uh, I don't have Mega Drain no more, so Blastoise is a bit of an issue. So I decided to 
just go for some metal sounds, lower that special defense. Of course, he misses. I don't know how you miss metal sound. You're literally just shouting at it. How do you miss that? I don't know. He's not got any earplugs. Um, but anyway, we get the metal sounds off, hit it with an ancient power, do take out the Blastoise. And so that is another Pokemon trainer defeated. Another trainer not getting my badge. Um, and then obviously I need to go back and heal. Next up, we have a bird type uh, keeper. Leo sends out a Pidgeot. Again, no problem for me at all. I absolutely love seeing flying, bug, and fire type trainers because they are just easy to beat. Um, but of course, with a Pidgeot, I've not really got any rock type moves on Aerodactyl, so I have to switch in to my Rhydon. Um, and then Rhydon comes in, just hits it with a rock slide. You guys know the drill now. And then lo and behold, I do the exact same thing. Sky drop the jump up because it's a grass type, not knowing that, of course, it was going to break the game again. And I'm just in the exact same situation. I just keep missing it. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what type of Pokemon it is. If it's a flying type, you sky drop it, it, it just breaks. And this was super, super annoying because, like, I, I think I generally had my last Sandstorm left and it killed the jump up. It was a really, really annoying um, thing because he just kept max potioning. He wasn't even potioning, he just max potion every single time. Um, but yeah, luckily, I had just enough Sandstorms left. You only get 10, and I think you get like 4 or 5 turns of Sandstorm. But yeah, luckily, we take out the Jump Bluff, which again, wasn't fun. And then brings out the Skarmory. It's another flying type, so I wasn't going anywhere near it with Sky Drop. Anyway, I take the Skarmory out, go back and heal. And um, it's time to, uh, to buy some more potions and stuff just because I've got a little bit more money. I mean, some of the decorations in this game are a bit ridiculous, but anyway, we're moving on to Team F now, which is the final team in the game. You have Golem, Steelix, Kabutops, Rhydon, Aerodactyl, and an Omastar. Six Pokemon on my team, a real powerhouse of a team as well. It's really nice having like a couple of water types on the team as well, just to deal with the pesky water types that I'm going against. Grass types, also not a massive problem anymore because I have Aerodactyl with Sky Drop. Um, time to look at my team. As you can see, they're all like level 80s, low 80s, mid 80s. Aerodactyl has uh, no flying type moves actually, so Sky Drop, again, can't glitch me out anymore. I've got Mega Horn on Rhydon now, which is really, really nice. And that's the team though, and it's time to take on some more trainers. Another Team Rocket Grunt trying to try and is. Uh, look at the Indigo League once again, trying to get this Boulder badge. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I started my journey and I just left Pallet Town, I came to Pewter City and started trying to take on the gym leader, and he, he led with a level 82 Aerodactyl, I would have thought that I was a bit unlucky. Uh, but anyway, this Rocket Grunt was a bit annoying because he did have a Tentacruel, which, again, really, really did destroy my team, uh, barring, like, the, uh, the, the, the fossils that I had. Anyway, sends out a Persian. Also has a Gengar as well. Um, this thing was also a bit of an issue. But anyway, I take them out. Team Rocket Grunt Nick, he's gone. And then this guy's got a shiny arc, and I'm like, oh no, he's going to have another Lugia. He's going to have another hack team. He's going to have another hack team. But uh, he does send out this level 82 shiny Arcanine, um, which I'm fine with, absolutely fine with, because I can take it out. It is a high level, it is shiny, but it is still weak to rock type moves. It does have the Intimidate, which is a bit unfortunate. And then Cloyster comes out, which I thought was an issue, but then I was like, oh wait, I can just Ancient Power it, because this guy's special defense is literally non-existent. And then he brings in a Magneton as well, um, and that's just another Pokemon that I can easily take out. It does have Magnet Rise, so I can Earthquake it and stuff. And then Nick comes back, he's like, bro, I'm done with Team Rocket, I want this Boulder Badge, let me bring my exact same team so the exact same thing happened once again just like it did like at the very start of the video where i took out like the same guy twice in a row anyway i'm not going to show you the team again because we've literally just beat him so team rocket grunt nick's gone and then scientist aaron's over here trying his luck at getting my boulder badge and this guy was also a little bit annoying as well he did lead with an amphros which was a pretty good start um but of course whenever they have porygon 2 it's just it's not a fun time especially with tri attack uh, but steel it comes in though destroying all these Pokemon. I decided to explode the Jolteon. Didn't kill. I don't know how we didn't, but anyway, I defeat that trainer. Check the trash can. This is the first time I checked the trash can as well, just in case there was any extra items in there. There wasn't. So I go and heal, and then Biker Xavier wants to battle, and I believe this was the last battle I actually had. Uh, it leads with a Dugtrio, which is absolutely fine. I don't think it can really touch my um, Aerodactyl, and then Queen comes in. I just go into my Rhydon. Again, nothing Nothing really difficult about this. I can just um, Earthquake it. It's, it's obviously part poison type. Uh, and then that's it. That's basically all of the, the battles done. Uh, that was the last trainer I had to battle. And so now I can make my way to the back room and see what's at the very end of the game. So I go up to Merc, Dirk's twin brother, and he's saying that um, the retirement room's right ahead of me. But he's saying, like, once you go into this retirement room, that's it. You know, you can't battle anymore or anything like that. So I'm straight in because I wanted that early retirement. And this is the retirement room. It is literally just is, is just the back of the gym. There's some mushrooms. And it says Pewter City Retirement Room. Room only accessible to retired trainers. And then that says a bit of water. There's some, like, say, mushrooms. Try and step on the podium. It says I've been retired. 
And then I try and exit the gym, start my journey, and Dirk's like, nah, bro, you retired, but you, you, you ain't going anyway. You're staying here forever. And I go and talk to him. He's like, that's a fine journey. And then that's it. That, that is Pokemon Gym Leader Simulator. Um, quite difficult, but uh, either way, if you enjoyed, drop a like and see you next time.